Recently, Nature Change subscribers asked us to investigate the surprising accumulation of sediment at the southern end of Traverse City's Boardman Lake. Could it be that efforts to heal and restore the Boardman River are damaging the lake? As shown in a recent Nature Change video essay, Sabin is the last of three dams to be removed in a massive effort to restore the free flow and ecological integrity of the Boardman River. A large team of engineers, ecologists, heavy equipment operators, and many others are lowering the water impounded behind the dam and returning the river to its original channel. As they do, one of the biggest challenges is the management of sand, silt, and organic sediments that have accumulated behind the dam for nearly 100 years. Brett Fessel is a river ecologist with the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians and a co-chair of the implementation team that oversees the Boardman River Restoration Project. With each removal, as the channel slices down through the uh, sediment that it accumulated, we're actually moving it off into the uplands and managing it as it goes downstream by trapping it in, in uh, pools or sediment traps and, then, and dealing with it. Uh, in place there. Now, we can't possibly catch every grain of sand or every um, small piece of organic material that's in suspension, so we do see some quantities that move down and then are moving down downstream and have made their some of it has made their made its way to Boardman Lake here. At the Sabin site, contractors are working to remove and control sediment almost continuously. In several places, the water flow is intentionally slowed to create a trap for the collection and removal of sediments. At the same time, Fessel and others monitor the accumulation of mucks and sediments downstream, measuring deposits at several transects across the Boardman River. Traverse City Public Services Director and Implementation Team Co-Chair Frank Duturi says that a surge of very fine, mucky sediments released by the dam deconstruction is contributing to the formation of a new delta in the Boardman Lake. So we're seeing elevated levels of turbidity, you know, cloudiness in the river, if you will. We're seeing elevated levels of organic material, mucks, sands, silts that, that have washed down through the river, and they're going to find themselves the, the next easiest place to be deposited, which is essentially when, the, when the, the current slows or the slope of the river flattens to a point to where those things settled out. We're seeing that here at the delta at the south end of Bourbon Lake. The excessively cloudy water and accumulation of muck is expected to taper off over time, but Dutiri is quick to point out that a natural, free-flowing river is supposed to convey sediments and nutrients, as well as water within its channel and floodplain. Crystal clear river water is simply not very natural or healthy. A river system that doesn't have dams in it any longer is now a conveyor of the things that it's supposed to move. And so you'll have ele elevated amounts of um, sediments, silts, fines, organics, wood, branches, all those things that float down through rivers that used to be caught behind a dam will actually make, make their way down through the system. So we have the sediments moving their way down through the entire river valley all the way up above Brown Bridge since there are no dams in and we're seeing the result of construction. This isn't the first time a delta has formed in Boardman Lake. Aerial photographs of the area from 1938 and 54 clearly show a large delta and wetlands that are not visible in later aerial photographs. Nate Winkler is a biologist and Boardman River project manager for the Conservation Resource Alliance. Yes, yeah, so 1938, Sabin Dam had just recently, recently been rebuilt, and also the channel downstream of Sabin Dam had been dredged extensively to straighten it and to lower, lower the channel bed. And that, that caused sediment to be suspended in the water column to a higher extent than it normally would for a period of time. And that material entered Boardman Lake. So the, there's a little push-pull there. The, there is a bit of sediment, extra sediment, that went into Boardman Lake during this time, but for all intents and purposes, that spigot was shut off when things stabilized and the dams uh, really started capturing that sediment. 
Photos from 1993 and 2018 show a much reduced delta and no significant wetlands. Roads and urban development completely changed the character of this area. Fessel and Winkler agree that the mucky sediments collecting in the south end of Boardman Lake today will stabilize and help create new wetland habitat, habitat missing from the area for many years. Here, when you have a dynamic deposit of organic materials, that is the foundation of a wetland complex, if you will, an emergent wetland complex that creates perfect conditions for growth of vegetation um, in small islands or within the flow of the river, and essentially creating this diverse span of uh, area at the interface of a river and a lake that's going to change through time. The organic sediment would, will eventually vegetate with wetland plants and over time it will become less mobile and will create refugia for fish and wildlife. And that habitat is not available in Boardman Lake to a large extent. So, we're actually gaining a, a certain type of habitat that is not really prevalent in the lake, but is very important.